Hi, I'm Johnny, and I sometimes take pictures for Fast Bikes magazine. This is me, some way away. Not coming up in the part 4 finale of this mini-series section of my attempted video blog. BJ does a confession. Although we did all do a tank of fuel in about 36 miles. Awkward moment. Leave me hanging. And... That doesn't seem far enough. Now it's added 6 miles, there you go. You probably know people who are doers and others who are choosers. Some set out to make things happen. Others are happy to pick odd bits of sushi from life's conveyor belt as it glides past. This trip was part necessity, the bikes had to get to Portimao somehow, and part choice. And part holiday. Painful, stupid holiday. BJ from the magazine is leading our group on the S1000, I'm mostly on a ZX10R, Gary from Bridgestone on an R1M, and lucky reader Dan on his own 899 Palingale. So, as uh, there seems to be enough helper out of us, we can have a good chat and we can talk about how well today went mm -hmm. compared to yesterday, yes. which we're trying to forget about. Well, well, no, let's, let's be fair. Yesterday started off poorly, was, fanta then was fantastic, then went massively wrong and we were all very unhappy. So it didn't stop, and we, were, we didn't expect much today, did we? Let's be honest. But the truth is, from the second we rolled out of our flea bit in a hotel this morning, we're 260 kilometers north of Madrid. Um, it's been brilliant. First of all, the riding with the sun coming up, with all the desert, because Spain is just full of sand, um, was epic. Uh, going th past Madrid was fantastic. And uh, yeah, and then later on the dangerous riding competition started. Basically, you can get a little bit bored on the motorways, and the fact of the matter is that uh, I think we went for 45 to 50 miles without seeing a single car either way on one stretch of motorway over here. So, you know, you start doing things like Top Gear roll-on competitions, so R1 versus BMW, ZX10 versus BMW, ZX10 versus R1. Different gears. And so on, different gears, yeah. And we've basically uh, found out that the R1 can't even pull away from an 899 in Top Gear. <laughs> so what, what, what gear advantage does it need from It has to be, to keep, to, to keep up with the BMW, it needs to be in fourth gear at anywhere from 60 to 90 miles an hour. Uh, full throttle, it has to be in fourth gear, and even then it tends to lose a little bit. However, if you put them both in third gear, the R1 actually keeps it neck and neck. Because it starts off in the green bit. In the green bit, yes. Yes, that's correct. Yes. We also did the Portuguese TT, that was good. How did that go? Uh, uh, silly. Not proud, but it was really good fun. Oh yeah, the bit that I couldn't see because you ended up three minutes ahead after about... Uh... On a stretch of only 14 miles, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It was good, it was quick. Cool, and then we found that really nice road, but it was so hot that we all almost fell over with heat exhaustion. I mean, yesterday could have been the best day any of us have ever, ever had on the bike, and it was just horrendous. But today, from start to finish, was this is why we love bikes, this is why we go biking for days like today. And do you know what? People say motorways, motorway travel's boring. Well, yeah, do you know what? In England it is. But over here, it's a pleasure on motorways because there's no one on them. They're absolutely empty, which leads to larks and mucking about. But at the same time, you can just, you get places really fast, you know, relative, relatively speaking. Yeah, so we did, we did a thousand kilometers today. Yeah, and we stopped a lot and we had long stops as well. And we still got here, and we got a shooting at the same time, and we still got here roughly within an hour of when we expected to. So that was really good going, yeah. I guess we better help these guys out now then. Yeah. With the last few kilometers rolling under our wheels, Dan and I were content to make sure we definitely got to Circuit Algarve in one piece. BJ, meanwhile, was more excited by the prospect of finishing the long trip at all. So what have I learned from my new experiences? Well, apart from don't take on a four-part vlog series when three parts was already a stretch, Simon's advice of... Don't think you're in a rush. ...move more advice for life than just a touring tip. Do become familiar with new kit before you leave. My new phone and BJ's sat-nav would both have been a lot less unhelpful if we'd known more about them. Don't fasten bags to your seat unit with the hope that it'll probably be all right, because it'll just worry you for hour after hour. Do learn foreign words for toll booth so that you don't cruise past signs with funny writing on at 90 miles an hour before you suddenly realise there's a barrier. Oh, while we're on about tolls, some ticket machines are very particular about how you insert and remove your credit card. Firm and fast is better. 
So what about riding a sports bike 1500 miles in three days? In itself, I can't recommend it. After all, it's just a thing that's possible. But as a trip with a few mates where some things will go wrong and others will be great and you'll hate stuff and love stuff and be bored and excited and challenged and then relieved, I can't recommend it highly enough, especially if it's new or a bit scary. It's not something I'll try and make happen again, but if someone else does and gives me the choice, it'll be hard to choose not to. I don't really do social media, but comment below or email me here.